Good morning. Thanks for turning into Facebook this morning. My name is Kurt, good friend. Uh, I was born January 6, 1938 in Vienna, Austria. Uh, and I'm a Holocaust survivor. Um, I was born January 6th. Two months later, Hitler marched into Austria <clears throat> and annexed Austria to Germany. And uh, Austria stopped existing uh, <clears throat> throughout the war and it became a province of Germany. Um, my father was deported on May 6, 1942 to uh, Belarus, uh, to uh, a place called Mali Trostinets. Most people have never heard of it because there were very few survivors. It was not a camp. People got there on the train, were taken off the train and uh, marched into the woods executed there and buried, buried in mass graves. My grandfather went on the first transport to Theresienstadt in uh, Czechoslovakia. And uh, three months later, like most people that got to Theresienstadt, he was sent to Treblinka and murdered there too. Uh, he was deported on the 21st uh, June of 42, and then on the 19th of September, he went to Treblinka. Uh, and I want to tell you a little bit about Theresienstadt. Theresienstadt was uh, uh, built, constructed between 1780 and 1790. Uh, the Austrians who it belonged to the Empire of Austria at the time, uh, was afraid that the um, Germans could just walk into it. And in uh, 1942, 7,000 7, Czechs were expelled from Theresienstadt and um, a camp slash ghetto was established. Um, of 144,000 sent to Theresienstadt. A quarter died in, the, uh, in Theresienstadt of the deadly conditions. Um, hunger, stress, diseases, especially the typhus conditions toward the end of the war. 88,000 deported to the east and murdered. By the end of the war, there were 17,247 people remaining in uh, 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 Theresienstadt. By the way, Theresienstadt in Czech is called Terezin. Uh, 242 children, younger than 15, survived deported, deportation to the east and survived. And I'm one of the lucky 242 states. Uh, when we arrived in Theresienstadt, we had to um, give everything valuable to uh, the uh, Germans, the SS and all the money, jewelry, et cetera, et cetera. And my mother was wearing her wedding band. And I have to tell you a little story before I get into this. Uh, my father uh, was a jeweler. And when he made the wedding bands for my mother and for himself, he said to her, you know it's gold, I know it's gold. I'm not gonna um, put the, uh, the, in German it's called a punze, it's a mark showing that officially it is gold. So the SS guy looked at it and he didn't see that. And he showed it to his partner and the partner obviously couldn't find it either. 
So he said to her, I'll give her back that metal ring. So my mother had the ring, uh, was, kept the ring. In the camp, she wanted to trade it for a loaf of bread, half a loaf of bread, but she couldn't because she didn't have the mark. So my mother kept the ring all her life and we ha I have the rings to this day. Uh, my older daughter didn't use it when she got uh, married. Uh, and maybe my younger daughter uh, will uh, uh, use it. Um, now, my mother uh, had, had heard you should volunteer for work. So when they asked people to split mica, uh, she volunteered. Splitting mica, uh, mica is a mineral that uh, uh, was, uh, uh, they had to split it for, and it, mica was used in the 30s and 40s for electronics. And uh, I believe that is one of the reasons that we were never sent away. Uh, so my mother did that. I was playing with other kids. We were playing soccer. We pretended to carrying dead people. Sometimes I went stealing coal. My mother taught me how to read and write math. Um, and uh, one of my uh, best friends was going to the train station uh, because um, uh, uh, his time came to go to the east and I wanted to go with him. So I begged my mother to go with him. And first my mother refused, then I begged and begged more and she decided, okay. So we went to the train station and we got on the train and, um, but then when they checked the people by their names, we weren't on the list. So luckily they threw us off the train, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. Uh, now, my aunt Renee, who, like I have to tell you again something back, my mother, and her siblings were what is called in German Mischling, mixtures. Her mother was Jewish, her father was Catholic. And there was a big age difference between uh, my mother and uh, my aunt Renee. Uh, there was about a nine year age difference. And when my grandparents got divorced, my um, grandfather insisted that his youngest child, Renee, would be brought up Catholic. And she was in fact brought up Catholic. She went to a convent for education and was educated by uh, nuns. And for some reason, she was able to stay in Vienna uh, or because she worked for an attorney and he was able to protect her. And she remembered package, she sent us packages into the Reisenstadt. You could get packages with food. Uh, I think I got a ball once. And um, so, and after each package, my mother wrote back, received the package, thank you, et cetera, et cetera. And most of the time you could only write, received your package, thank you, and that was it. You couldn't ask for anything. But my mother was pretty clever. And when she wrote the postcard, which I'll show you a little later, uh, she wrote in between her first name and her last name uh, something in Viennese. For example, she wanted once 
uh, girl. So she wrote um, uh, something in the card uh, in the address box because the census didn't look at the address box. And uh, then we got what she wanted. Uh, I remember uh, being hungry uh, and my mom drilling me, drilling constantly to wash my hands, just like today. Uh, okay. And in 1943, reports about the death camps came out, so Nazis decided to present the reasons that to the Red Cross. Now, they didn't uh, do it willingly. The King of Denmark insisted that uh, it would be shown. And then an elaborate big hoax was done and uh, they beautified uh, Theresienstadt. They put in gardens, gardens were planted, houses painted, barracks renovated. Fake stores established, a coffee house, a bank were built. Afterwards, Nazi produced a propaganda a film about new life for Jews under the Third Reich. After finishing, most of the people were sent to Aus uh, Auschwitz gas chamber. These were the people that appeared in the film. Liberation came May 8, uh, 1948, by the uh, Red Army, and actually May 8 is the official end of World War II. And um, uh, I remember tanks, the Russian tanks coming in, and the SS running away, and um, I even went on a tank uh, once. Uh, the Russian soldiers invited me. You know, I was at the time of the liberation, I was seven and a half. Um, and be because my mother had heard reports about diseases, especially typhus from the camps in the east, we walked to Prague, walked and hitchhiked, and uh, went back to Vienna on a, a truck. I went straight to second grade because my mom had taught me how to read, write, and do the math, uh, and write. Uh, at age 14, I wanted to stop school and become a businessman. In Austria and in most of Europe at the time and still today, kids that finished uh, middle school, uh, eighth grade, uh, at age 14 were able to stop school and apprentice for a trade. Well, I wanted to become a businessman. And my mother said, no, you can't become a businessman. You must learn a trade. Why did she say you must learn a trade? It's because uh, people, uh, carpenters, plumbers, um, electricians, etc., etc., had a better chance to survive a camp because they needed uh, people that were able to work with their hands. And um, uh, so my mother insisted I learn something with my hands. And I, be I uh, apprenticed to become an optician. Optician is somebody that makes the, uh, makes the glasses, puts the glasses in the frames, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I apprenticed. The day I was finished was my last day to work as an apprentice. 
And at the same time, at the age of 14, I had applied for a visa to the United States. And visas were issued strictly on the basis, immigration visas were issued strictly on the basis of what country you were born in. And um, uh, the Austrian quota took five years. So after I was finished with my apprenticeship, uh, it was only a few months later, I got a letter from the embassy that I could come to the States. And um, I got a visa, my uncle in uh, England, uh, paid for my sea voyage from uh, England to New York. And I came to the States May 19th, 1958, as a 20-year-old. And um, now we're going to show some of the pictures. Uh, so uh, the, the, Okay, now here is to show on the top right hand is a, a Minsk, is a, where my father was killed. Uh, that, by the way, there was a trip of six days. Uh, and then on the bottom you see from Vienna to Theresienstadt is a, actually a very short trip. It's probably not much more than a hundred uh, kilometers. And from uh, Prague to Theresienstadt, where we walked out, uh, that's about uh, 30 miles or so. And uh, next picture. Now here are some of the postcards. Uh, that my mother wrote. In, you can see in the front, uh, there's the Hitler picture. And in the middle of the uh, my aunt's name, uh, Rene Grasel, it says noble, noble. And noble doesn't mean anything in German. Uh, but, but my mother, when she signed the card, she signed it... Uh, Hilde, her name, and Duty. Now, Duty also doesn't mean anything, but the, my nickname in German is Kurti. And um, so my aunt was able to figure out that the noble is a K, it's Knobel, and Knobel in German is garlic. Next picture, please. Okay, here's one of the cards that my mother wrote. Sometimes you could write a lot of things. I have no idea where my mother got uh, a typewriter to type. Next picture, please. And I had, had given to the Holocaust Museum in Illinois, we didn't, in uh, Washington, we didn't have the mu a museum here yet. And I had given all my cards to the museum. And after I gave it to them, they asked me, would you like to have um, an appraisal? And I said, are they worth anything? And they said, yes, they're worth something. And I got an appraisal from the Library of Congress. And he gave me an appraisal for my uh, collection of $30,000 which was a nice tax deduction for me that year. Uh, and it, the reason he gave me such a high um, appraisal is he had seen one card, two cards, three cards, but he had never seen a hundred cards from almost throughout the war. Um, next, here's another card. Next, another one, next. And you always see the same thing. Uh, she wants something, I can't even read that. Um, 
in Saint Hilde Kurti. Uh, okay, next picture. Next. So you get an idea of how how many there are. There's over a hundred cards in the museum in Washington. Next, please. Next. Okay, this is just a picture. I believe that I don't know if this is my son. I think. Uh, okay, next. Okay, now here is a um, uh, ancestry re record because my mother was a Michelin, a mixture. She thought maybe she would be considered a Christian because uh, she was a half Christian. And most people that wanted this wanted to actually join the Nazi party to show that they are not have any Jewish blood. And for example, here it says, husband is Jewish. Uh, okay, next one, please. And up, uh, and it says somewhere, yeah, up here, a child is uh, a Jewish. Uh, my name, Kurt, and my birthday, 6138. And these are some of my, you know, my grandfather, like my grandmother, for example. But my grandmother, they wrote only in MOS, which stands for Mosaic, uh, which is Jewish, uh, <clears throat> and uh, didn't help her. She was considered Jewish. Next picture, please. Okay, this is my uh, mother and I. And I'm as a child. That's before the uh, before we got to the camp. Next, it's me. Next, uh, <clears throat> my mother in 1926. She was voted the most beautiful sales lady in Vienna. My uh, mother, my father. Next. Uh, this is my mother and my father skiing. Next. These are just some pictures from Theresienstadt. Next. Uh, that is me as a teenager. Next. Uh, these are some pictures. This is, uh, I think, a picture of my bar, uh, bar mitzvah. This is a, in the middle is a picture of me when I came to the States. And at the end is a picture when I first got married. Next. These are some pictures from the 70s, 80s. Next. Okay, this is my mother and this is me. And this is the, th the uh, three sisters. Herma, who lived in the States, who I came to, my mother in the middle, and Renee all the way on the right when you look at, at the picture. Next. Okay, now <clears throat> I have three children. I have a son, David, who is 58. I have a daughter, Leslie, who is 54. And I have a daughter, Hetty, who is 24, I graduated two years ago from college. Uh, and I have two granddaughters, uh, my granddaughter, Danny, who attends University of Michigan, and my granddaughter, Lexi, who's uh, a junior at Highland Park High School. And I think next, I think this is it, yeah. Okay, so um, I wanna thank you again for turning in. Join us here next Wednesday, June 10th at 10 a.m. to hear Holocaust survivors Dean Metz share his story. Please keep an eye uh, on Illinois Holocaust Museum Facebook and other social media accounts
we'll post the stream of content through the weeks ahead. Thank you for support during these extraordinary times. Thank you. Bye.